The general structure for naming alkenes and alkynes is almost identical to that used for naming alkanes. To begin with, you start exactly as though you were naming an alkene, but you include the double bond in the longest chain. Then you have to note which carbon the double bond starts on, and if any structural information is given, such as a structural formula or a three-dimensional drawing, then use a cis-trans designation as appropriate. The cis-trans designations are for certain isomers that are only possible with double bonds. These isomers are known as geometric isomers. Whenever you have a double bond, and on one side of the double bond are hydrogens, and on the other side of the double bond are carbon chains or heteroatoms such as nitrogen or chlorine or things like that, then you have what is known as a cis isomer. The interesting things are on one side and the hydrogens are on the other. If you have a situation where the interesting things are on opposite sides of the double bond and the hydrogens are also on opposite sides of the double bond, you have a trans isomer. So we'll start using one isomer of C4H8. This isomer has the double bond on a terminal carbon, that is one of the carbons on the end of a chain. These hydrogens are not R groups, they're not carbon chains, and they are not heteroatoms. And because they're the same element, there's no way to tell the difference between having the top hydrogen on top or switching them and having the one that's on top currently be on the bottom. There's no difference between these two molecules, so you can't use a cis-trans designation. So just like with naming alkanes, we look for our longest carbon chain. It's four carbons long, and we start numbering from the end that is closest to the double bond. In this case, the double bond is at the end. So we have our double bond on carbon number one, and we have four carbons, and we have an alkene. So the alkene ending is ENE. -E. But is the base name that gets used for four carbon long chains. And we should indicate which carbon the double bond starts on, and we want to give that the lowest number. In this case, we would say that the double bond starts on carbon number one. And when we put all of that together, we end up with one butene. Now we'll look at a different isomer of C4H8. This isomer is slightly different. The double bond is in the middle rather than at the end. We could also draw this with a line diagram. In this case, the hydrogens are not shown explicitly, but they would be at the top of the molecule. So again, we start like we would when we're naming alkenes. We still have a four carbon long chain, so we have a butte. We still have a double bond, so we have to use the alkene ending, ENE. -E. We also have to number our carbon chain based on which side is closest to the double bond. In this case, we have a symmetrical molecule, so it doesn't matter if we label it from left to right or right to left. Either way we number it, the double bond would start on carbon number two. And because we have structural information, and we know that the hydrogens are on the same side of that double bond, and the R groups, or the, the CH3 groups in this case, are on the same side of the double bond, we know we have a cis designation. So we have, in the end, cis 2 butene. Now we have a third isomer of C4H8. In this one, the hydrogens are on opposite sides of the double bond, and the CH3 groups are on opposite sides of the double bond. And again, we could also draw this more simply with a line diagram. And again, when we want to name this, we name it exactly as though it was an alkane. We still have four carbons, so but. We still have an alkene, so an ENE ending. The double bond is again in the middle, so it's a 2-butene. And this time we have our things showing up on opposite sides of the double bond, so we have a trans. So the final name is trans-2-butene. Now we'll look at a slightly more complicated example, C9H18. This is a fairly large and complicated looking molecule, but it can be named very straightforwardly. We count the longest carbon chain, and this one's been drawn to illustrate that one very clearly. So the longest carbon chain is eight carbons long, and is indicated by this box. We have to number our chain 
with the double bond closest to the end. So that means we have to label this left to right. We have an eight carbon chain. It has a double bond, so it is an octene. The double bond starts on carbon number three, so it's a three octene. The double bond has hydrogens on one side, and it has carbon chains on the other side, so it's a cis three octene. And there's a methyl group stuck on carbon number five. So it is a 5-methyl cis-3-octene. The next example has multiple double bonds. Occasionally you'll be given an example that looks something like this, which is a combination of the condensed formulas and the structural formulas, where only some of the bonds are shown explicitly. Something like this doesn't give you enough information to label anything with a cis or trans designation because you don't know which sides of the double bonds contain carbon chains and which sides contain hydrogens. So you'll have to leave out the cis-trans designation here. But again, the method is largely the same. You count the longest carbon chain, and in this case, because there are no substituents, that chain is just the molecule as written. And there are seven carbons in this chain. So we have a hept for our base. There are two double bonds, so we have to find a way to illustrate that. Double bonds get an ENE ending, but now there are two of them, so we have to label that somehow. Just like in other cases where we have multiple versions of the same substituent, say two or three methyl groups, and we would call that a dimethyl or a trimethyl. When you have multiple double bonds, you refer to them as dienes or trienes or tetraenes, things like that. Here we have two, so it's a diene. And rather than have a double consonant, we add the A back into our base name. So it's a hepta diene. We also have to label where those double bonds are. And the closest we can get a double bond to the end of the chain is if we label from left to right. So we have a double bond that starts at carbon two, and we have a double bond that starts at carbon four. So we have a two, four hepta diene. Alkynes are actually even easier to name because they can't have that cis-trans isomer effect because they only have a linear geometry. There can only ever be two electron domains around a triple bonded carbon. So let's consider C6H10. One isomer of C6H10 is as follows. We name things exactly the same as we would name them if they were alkanes. We look for the longest carbon chain. In this case, there are five carbons in the longest chain. That would be this chain, or it would be this chain. Both are effectively equivalent. Because there are five carbons in the longest chain, we start with a pent for our base. Because there's a triple bond, it gets a YNE ending. So we have a pentine. And again, we have to include the number of the carbon where that triple bond resides. And again, we have to get that triple bond uh, numbered so that it's closest to one of the ends. In this case, it means we have the following labels. So our triple bond is on the second carbon, so we have a two pentine. We're not finished yet though. We still have that leftover methyl group to take care of, and the methyl group is attached to the fourth carbon. So we have a four methyl two pentine. 